This is John Carmack. He's arguably the best software developer ever. Why? Quake, Doom, Wolfenstein. His engine was also licensed for things like Half-Life, Call of Duty, and Medal of Honor. So really, without him, first-person shooters as we know it today wouldn't exist. Not to mention, we'd also be missing his work on graphics and sound cards and other aspects of games that are super important. But if you ask him what makes a good programmer, what does he say? Justin Saunders asks, Many people consider you to be one of the best programmers in all of games and graphics. I was wondering, what measures do you to gauge the skill of a programmer? Now, what makes John a great programmer? It probably isn't his Ferrari or his rocket hobby skills with NASA. So John answers, like most things, it's difficult to come up with a single way that sum of the value of a programmer. I prefer to evaluate multiple axes independently. Programming is really just the mundane aspect of expressing a solution to a problem. There are talents that are specifically related to actually coding, but the real issue is being able to grasp problems and devise solutions because you can break up programming languages down into about four concepts. Variables, functions, loops, and conditions. In different languages, they might be called different things. Once you understand them in one language, you can understand them in all languages. Talent zero. Being able to clearly keep a lot of valuable aspects of a complex system visualized is valuable. It's easy to drown in details. What's this? All of it's complicated. And that's only when you're working with one program. Wait until you start working with multiple programs or some APIs some other team has written. Your ability to keep track of everything mentally when it's a very complex system is the first thing that's going to make a good programmer. His next answer is having a feel for the time and storage that is flexible enough to work over a range of 10 orders of magnitude is valuable. John buried me on this one. I'm guessing he's talking about performance of processes and memory or data structures. 10 orders of magnitude is actually 10 billion. I have no context for this quote on what he was actually talking about. Experience is valuable. This will come up again. Of course, experience will always separate skilled from unskilled. No guitarist would play one song and say they're skilled. If you never create a website, you'll struggle with creating websites. If you never design an API, you'll struggle working with APIs. While you don't need to be an expert at everything, having knowledge across many domains will help you when you want to interact with other people in other areas of work. Moving on to the next one, knowing the literature is valuable. There are an absolute ton of great books on programming. You can check out the links in this description for some of the ones I recommend. When you start out, you basically know nothing, but a book like Design Patterns is worth its weight in gold. You'll be able to use that for the rest of your career. On to the next one. Being able to integrate methods and knowledge from different fields is valuable. The more experiences you have, the easier it's able to model your code after real life. From my personal experience, the more I study video games, the more it helps me think about problems. Signing PDFs has a lot in common with the way your trainer and Pokemon moves around the map. After this video, go check out the video I'll link for Chris's courses. You can see what I mean. The more strategies you're exposed to, the more tools you have in your toolbox. Remember what John said before, experience is valuable. Talent 5 is up next, but first, if this video has been helpful so far, drop it a like or share it with someone you know. Being consistent is valuable. Consistency can mean a lot of things. Obviously, if you don't show up for work, nobody's going to want to work with you. What I think John actually means when he talks about consistency is probably more related to programming style. If you're always coding in different styles, it's going to be really hard to understand what your code means. If you stick to common patterns along with your team, even if you don't 100% agree with the way it's coded, it'll make it easier for everyone else to read. You can push for alternate solutions, but remember to work as a team. You don't always get your way. If your whole team can look at code and tell who wrote it, it's probably a problem. But once you understand one section of code someone wrote, if you see that same pattern again, it's always easier to understand that being creative is valuable. Problems come in one of four types. Complex, complicated, chaotic, or obvious. Obvious problems have best practices, just use the best practices. Complicated problems have good practices, you should use them. Complex problems and chaotic problems require creativity to solve. With a complex problem, you're usually constrained in how you solve it. The difference with a chaotic problem is there are probably infinite things you can do to attempt to solve that problem. There's no constraints on the issue. Sometimes having constraints is actually better because they inspire better solutions. Focus is extremely important. Being able to maintain focus for the length of a project gets harder and harder as schedules grow longer, but it's critical to doing great work. You're not able to control when someone walks into your cubicle. 
You're not able to control when someone texts you. I think what he actually means is working through your next story feature sprint can feel like a slog. At the start, a problem is new and exciting. The excitement can wear off on week 18. I know his domains and games. If you have a reoccurring bug or a continuous scope creep, it can kill all your excitement. Great programmers figure out ways to push through and stay entertained even if they acknowledge it's a slog. So these were John Carmack's eight talents that make you a great programmer. Which one's your favorite? Comment down below. And here's Chris's courses to show you how to code Pokemon so you can see what I mean about PDFs.